Hello and welcome to this session. This is a second session on how to create a sample SOAP API testing project with Catalon Studio. And in this session, we are going to learn API chaining or how to pass a value from the response of one API to the request of any other API. And in the earlier session, we have already seen how to add API request and then how to add it to a test case and use verification and web services keyword so just in case you have not seen the earlier session you can watch that first and this is going to be a continuation from there so let me go to my catalon studio and i'm using version 5.8.4 and we already have created a project in the last session and we have added a soap api request here which is get country list by name so this api uh, gets the names or uh, get the list of countries with their names and the ISO code. Now, this is the Vistel that we are using. And here, if I pass it this Vistel document, let me use another API, which is going to get a capital of the country. So if I click on this capital city, so here, if we give the country ISO code, it will give us the capital city for this country. So let me add this. So I will create a new web service request and say this is get capital and this is going to be soap and I will also give this WSTL URL and say OK and here I will say load from Vistel and I will select the capital city web service request and in the request message I will add this body so I will add it here now here you can see here in the request we have to give the country ISO code. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fetch the country ISO code from the response of this first API and you can see we are getting the country ISO codes here and then provide it to the request of this API here. So for that what I have to do is now here you can see if I give any country ISO code for example IN is the ISO code of India and that you can check from this first API and if I run this this will give us the capital city of India, which is New Delhi. So let us wait and check. And yes, you can see it is giving us a correct response and it is giving us the capital city. So here we have to, we don't have to hard code this value. We have to fetch it uh, and then give it from the first API response. So what I'm going to do is instead of hard coding, I'm going to get it from a variable and the syntax to define a variable here is dollar and inside curly braces I will give the variable name so I will say this is uh, let us say country ISO code and I will copy this variable name you can see this is how we define a variable and I will go to variables and add it and in the variable name I will give the same name now here I can take it from here so example I give some variable code here and if I run this request now it will give us the capital city for the country that has ISO code as AX so this is the capital city and similarly let me check for if I say US here let me check what it gives so this is sending the request and you can see it is giving us the capital city of US which is Washington now again I still don't want to hard code it here I want to get it from the first response of the first API so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add it to a test case so I will create a new test case I will add both of these API so I can click uh, I can create a test case here and then add them or I can also directly go from here and add them to a test case. So I will say add to new test case. I will say this is test two for API chaining. I have already created test one in the earlier session. So I've been saying this is test two, which is demoing API chaining. And here I have added send request, get list country list by name. And in the output, I will say this is, this, the response should be stored in a variable called response one and if you go to the script view here and you can see here this is how it looks like in the script view we are sending our 
API request we are running our request and then storing it in a variable called response one now we have to add some uh, small code here to fetch the value from response and then have it uh, stored in some variable so this is what I'm going to use so here I am saying response one which is the variable I have used here dot response body content and storing it in a variable called xml1 and then I am using data value variable where I am saying new xml slurper so we are using xml slurper class to pass the xml response which I have stored in xml1 and now using data value and using the x path of the node that I want to get I can fetch the value so this is how I am going to use it so all this uh, code and all these notes will be available to you in the notes section or the description section of this video so here you can see what I'm saying is data value dot list of country names by uh, names by name result then dot t country code name and this is the sequence number and then s iso code and then text so this is actually the x path and let me just show you how I have achieved this so for example uh, let us see here if you want to get x path of any of these values here you can click your cursor or put your cursor there and press command k or control plus k on your keyboard and it will generate this snippet which gives you the location of that particular element so you can see this has given here also what you can do is copy your xml and search for xml toolbox so this is a service that you can use to get the X path so here it says insert your XML to the big field and then place the cursor in the text or attribute or of element you want an X path to so you can use this as well so here I can put my XML and then whatever I will click it will create a X path for that so this does not work every time so in case of a uh, simple xpath it will create it sometimes if your xpath is or your xml document is not properly formatted it will not generate but you can use this let me also copy this in the notes so this will be useful and in catalon studio with version uh, 5.8.3 onwards we have this uh, feature that you can directly click on your element in the response and press command k if you are on mac and control k if you are on windows and it will uh, generate this snippet to verify element text and we just want this x path so I, I will take it from here from the result and this is what we need and I will go to my test and I will use it here after data value dot and the X path and in the last at the last you will say dot text and I am storing it into a variable called country code now what I will do is I am going to create a global variable and I will say add and I will say country code and that's it and now whatever value has come here in country code I'm going to give it to the global variable so I will say here global variable dot country code you can see it is here equals to country code so after this step whatever is the value that will be fetched of country code that will go to our global variable that is country code and now this global variable we are going to use into our set capital uh, get capital API so here instead of string I will say get it from a global variable and in the default value I will select the global variable country code so now you can see our chaining is now done what we are doing is we are running our first API and then getting the response into a variable called response one then we are getting the xml content in a variable called xml one and then we are passing the xml using xml slurper and getting the uh, value in the data value variable and then using data value and the x path of the element that we want to get or fetch we are using this and storing it in a variable called country code and this value now we are storing it into the global variable country code that is 
referred here in the second API which is get capital. So now let me also add the second API into our test case which is get capital. I can do it here. I will say add web service keyword and this is send request and I will use this get capital and that's it and just to verify that I am able to fetch it properly I will also add some print statements here so after getting the global variable I will say println and I will say value for global variable is and I will print the value of global variable country code so this will like this we can verify that we are able to fetch the value from the response correctly and store it in the global variable country code I will save this and I will run this so let us just wait for this test to be completed and then we will verify the results so as of now this is running fine and yes you can see in the logs everything is okay if I go to the console I can just check and you can see the value that is fetched from the response of first API is AX and it is also saying value for global variable is AX that is then uh, given to the second API through global variable and now like this we are able to chain our API requests now there are multiple ways how you can fetch the response from an API response and then give it to the request of any subsequent API this is one of the easiest way and I think this will be very helpful for you so I hope this session was very useful for you thank you for watching